We've heard it time and time again. There are wild animals and then there are domesticated animals. The two are fundamentally different. One is completely comfortable living with and among humans and the other hostile and unsuitable for captivity. For instance, the animals that are definitely domesticated are cats and dogs. And what's not domesticated? Animals like lions, servals, and bobcats. In fact, these animals are so wild that even when we cross them with our traditionally considered domestic species, they are still considered wild. Like the savannah cat, which is a cat breed that was developed through crossing servals with domestic cats, and more popularly, the Bengal cat. This breed, despite being fully developed, with a breed standard and recognized by a slew of cat fancier associations is still considered by some to be at best problematic to keep as a pet due to its so-called wild genetics. Even though the amount is minuscule as Bengals are now only bred to each other without outcrossing to their seemingly wilder half. The Bengal was created by crossing Felis catus or your domestic cats with the leopard cat. No, not a leopard, which is a big cat, but a small wild living felid that is native to parts of Asia. Their distinctive markings and striking eyes make them stand apart from a typical cat despite their very similar size. Despite their not so intimidating appearance, you'll find that people will say absolutely no one should keep one as a pet. You know, because they are so wild and not domesticated which is the black and white criteria for even considering owning an animal. And due to not being domesticated, they are even banned to own in many states, including New York, California, and Georgia. Well, if you've ever wanted a leopard cat, you'll be happy to know that scientists have discovered they've been domesticated already. At least according to a study that identified 5,000-year-old Neolithic-era feline remains that were originally thought to be those of the ancestor of domestic cats, Felis sylvestris libica, as you guessed it, actually that of a leopard cat, Prionelurus bengalensis. The leopard cat bones were identified with geometric morphometric analyses. In contrast, it is widely accepted that the ancestor of the domesticated cat, Felis sylvestris, was domesticated in Southwest Asia around 10,000 years ago. These findings are significant because they highlight two separate isolated human-driven domestication events of two similar but not so closely related species, almost mirroring the process of convergent evolution, but with human preference instead of other natural selective pressures driving the changes to the population. Leopard cats are not so closely related to domestic cats, being in a different genus from the Felis cats, yet a regionally specific group appears to have had a relationship with humans that was separate from the domestic cats ancestors, serving the same purpose in the eyes of humans to control rodent pests. The paper stated that these data clearly indicate that the origins of a human-cat domestic relationship in Neolithic China began independently from Southwest Asia. However, as all domestic cats in China today are related to Felis sylvestris, it appears that the leopard cat was eventually replaced with little or no outcrossing. These findings are not surprising. Within archaeological research, scientists keep finding the bones of species thought to be unacceptable as pets in modern Western society being kept by early humans. From servals to bobcats and even cheetahs, humans have lived with so-called exotic pets before the dawn of modern civilization. We aren't even entirely sure when cats were domesticated, as research has shown there to be insignificant morphological differences between the purported cat's ancestor and the so-called domesticated species that emerged later. The discovery of ancient cat remains on the island of Cyprus, with seemingly unchanged morphology, led to the knowledge that felines had been brought to the area to live commensally with humans. Yet we are somehow convinced that other cats cannot be domesticated, whatever that word means. In the paper I'm referring to, domestication seems to be defined as any morphological and size difference or evidence of dietary change, such as worn teeth, but obviously nothing about how easy it is to care for that species or its behavior. And this is why I say so often that domestication has no real meaning, at least when it comes to how we use this term. We think it separates a good pet from a bad pet, and that clearly is not the case. Sometimes domestication is merely defined by any physical shift in an animal. Yet we often believe domestication means an animal is fine-tuned to live with humans in any setting, or that they are designed for confinement. The argument that an animal not being domestic 
domesticated means it shouldn't be a pet is relentlessly pushed. It is believed that owning so-called non-domesticated animals is a daunting task, despite older civilizations seeming to manage just fine with far fewer resources and knowledge than us. Although, let me be clear, leopard cats, sometimes referred to as Asian leopard cats or ALCs in the exotic pet trade, are different from house cats, at least when it comes to the population that is being kept within the U.S. I have limited information, but I've heard that some people who own them report that they are more skittish and leery of people, as one might expect, but does that mean they aren't domesticated? Here's what we can say. Cats and dogs have certainly dominated the human world with their unique levels of tameness, cleanliness, and biddability. This doesn't mean that alternative pets weren't kept or that they shouldn't be pets. Contrary to popular belief, dogs are not unique because of some high level of domestication. Dog behavior is their own unique set of traits. Dogs behave one way and cats another. Dogs have instincts too, but they tend to be far more manageable for people keeping them as house pets. They can even serve as companion animals, loyal and obedient. Cats are often perceived to have less of these traits, but cats are just different. They are not more wild, they just share less of these traits with dogs, despite also having an unusually high level of docility around humans when socialized with them. Cats will never be dogs, and vice versa. This also goes for the Asian leopard cat. They will never fully be like another species. Instincts exist on a spectrum and are variable among species. The tolerance of pet owners is also variable. While most of us want pets to be, quote, easy to care for, some of us are more willing to make sacrifices to experience living with a much cooler pet. Leopard cats were, unsurprisingly, replaced by Felis catus for a reason. Domesticated cats are calmer and more manageable than other members of the genus Felis and less closely related fielded species. Yet in ancient China, before Felis was introduced, leopard cats were their best option, and that civilization found them to be suitable domesticated pets. Several studies show that they exhibit anthropophilus behavior, or the ability to adapt to and live around human-modified environments, just like the ancestors of domesticated cats. These traits are present in far more species than most who believe in the domesticated versus undomesticated dichotomy care to realize. Leopard cats breed readily in captivity as their hybridization with domestic cats to create the Bengal breed reveals. Nothing about these leopard cats makes them so unusual and distinct from our familiar cat species as a domesticated animal. The only thing that does is our inherent bias against the idea of any non-familiar species being kept in captivity. These data show that at least leopard cats in captivity can be pets for the right owner, as they are, for all intents and purposes, a domesticable species. Even if they do not descend from the population that existed in ancient China, they likely are a product of at least several generations of captive breeding. And some research has shown even this seemingly small number of generations to be significant. It is a myth that it takes thousands of years or hundreds of generations to domesticate animals, particularly when it is completely undefined when a species crosses the domestication finish line. Cats, however, do not require selective breeding to be pets. In fact, the vast majority of cats in the world are not part of any selective breeding program. And there's even a few fully wild species that have been adopted from nature and kept as pets successfully. Cats are just a species that happens to fit the needs of humans as pets. And if a person desires to own a unique and beautiful, albeit slightly high maintenance, animal like an Asian leopard cat, there should be no reason for anyone to claim it is unethical to do so. So...